Good morning, everyone. Um, today we're going to be talking about social media campaigns. I'm sorry that you did not get the information for this lecture earlier. There were technical difficulties, and the first recording has disappeared. Um, as I mentioned, I was losing my voice, and I still am. So um, instead of playing the videos during the lecture, I will pause and have you guys refer to back to the platform, um, which the video should fall below uh, this video, and you can watch it then externally, and then come back and um, continue watching this video lecture. Okay. So I want you to think about what social media campaigns have caught your attention in your lifetime. What about them stood out to you? What elements did they have? Was there an element of interaction? Did they use somebody to get your attention? Was it the type of content in the ad? What was it that stuck with you? What was it that made you want to go do something or, again, take action? Um, you know, we had the ice bucket challenge. Why did people take action? What was it about it um, that made it go viral? There's been different Coke, um, you know, they had the Coke bottles and they have the names on them. Why did it stick? What is it that got people talking and created, you know, a viral trend? And how did they continue to, um, you know, use those emotions or use up the personality types to get people to continuously um, participate in the campaigns? We're going to talk about how campaigns fail and how campaigns work. So for the first one, this is a video that talks about how campaigns fail. McDonald's was actually trying to, you know, reach their target demographic and, you know, um, have them talk about memories that they've had at McDonald's. Great experiences. As I mentioned before, when I was a kid, we had our birthday parties at McDonald's. They had this big tree and it talked to you and they had all the characters in there and they had playgrounds and they wanted people to use nostalgia um, and, you know, talk about these great experiences. Unfortunately, sometimes when you're too close to an organization, you can't look outside the box, which you really need to do in order to see, you know, could there be an issue? What would the issue be? And really evaluate a plan before you put it out there. So I want you guys to go ahead and pause this video now. Go down and play the video that you have um, in your downloads called... Um, is it the McD story fails? I believe is what it's called. So go check that out right now. Okay, you guys should have seen this story and you probably laughed a little bit um, about the fails. I know I laugh every time I see it and I've seen it many, many, many times. McDonald's could have just left the campaign up because transparency, remember, is important. However, what they did was they um, they took it down after so much time. They realized that after two hours that the campaign was a failure because they had someone monitoring the brand. And because they took action, only 2% of their overall tweets ended up being about McD stories for the day. So there's something that can be learned from that. You need to make sure that you're paying attention to your campaigns. You need to make sure that you know you are following the trends and you have somebody who understands what's going on and somebody who can take action right away. So we're going to look at how campaigns fail. One of the ways that they fail is backfiring, like you just saw in the McD story case study. When it backfires, you need to be prepared to take action. The second way is having no response at all. And this is something that you guys might experience with your campaigns. One of the reasons that you might not have response is that you're not reaching enough people. Or, 
you're using the right wrong platforms and you're starting from a platform that you don't have a large audience and then driving traffic to another platform. So you need to really look at your roadmaps and figure out why are you doing it and do you have enough people. So start building your audiences now for your brands. Reach out to people, comment on their stuff, ask people to follow you. Another thing you might get is a negative response. And not just like the backfiring, but people are, you know, they're talking about it. It's just not in the manner in which you expected. Sometimes, you know, things go awry. Or sometimes, you know, you want them to do something and maybe you can change their perception. Um, you know, maybe a me the media are talking negatively about your brand and you could say something, you know, creatively to get them to think a different way or to give them more information to change their perception about something. Another thing is bad timing. So think about, you know, we look at events um, next week and we'll see what's going on, you know, around the campaign time. Is there something that might overshadow it? Or is there something that you can jump up onto, you know, the on and ride, ride out the wave with it, you know, figure out what they're saying. Um, but you want to look at what's happening, how many events are happening. Um, are you going to have competition? When is your competition putting something out? If your competition had just put something out before you, you need to evaluate what they're doing and make yours better. All right, the next thing is lack of exposure. Excuse me. All right, so for lack of exposure, think about how many platforms you're getting it out there to, right? Are you only putting it on one platform? Are you putting it on two? Are you using multiple platforms? Are you spreading things too thin? Um, what are you doing? How are you getting your content out there? Is it getting in front of enough eyeballs? Or are you putting it on a platform that you have two followers and no one's going to ever see it? The next one after that would be lack of organization. So while exposure is important, if you're not driving traffic and connecting your audience and creating a proper roadmap like you should be in assignment two, they're not even going to find your campaign materials. You know, are you putting it out there? Are they seeing it? Are you driving traffic to the ending point? Are you including URLs? What are you doing? Do you have share buttons? Can they interact with your campaign? Does everything work? Are you promoting it in enough time? What are you doing? All right, so in all fairness to McDonald's, I want you to look at the other downloaded video that talks about how campaigns work. And in this scenario, um, around this cafe and around different cafes, people were littering their trash. And the trash had McDonald's name on it. They weren't putting their trash in the garbage cans. So McDonald's decided to take a negative situation and turn it into a positive. So go ahead and pause this presentation now and watch the McD stories. I mean, not the McD stories, the McCafe um, video. All right, so the results of this case study are pretty darn awesome. Um, I'm just going to play a little bit of it and see if I can fast forward. If it will let me. All right, it's not going to let me. But the fact that they, you know, were able to take something negative and focus on um, something that so many people care about, like the environment, and turn it into something positive was an amazing accomplishment. So if you look at some of the factors that were involved in how this campaign worked, you'll see all of these over here. You'll see that they had an organized strategy. They knew what they wanted. They knew their problem. They created an online plan in order to get people to take action in public. You know, it stuck in their mind. It got their attention. They knew that they wanted people to come to the website to interact, to, you know, upload their image, and to share it with other people in order to get them to participate. They also, again, were using an attention-getting topic like the environment. 
So many people care about the environment. So when you talk about it and you're doing something good, you're going to get people to jump on board. The next thing would be interaction. So the more you have people interacting on your site, the longer they're going to spend time on your site. And so you want to come up with creative ideas, which is the next thing, in order to keep them interested. You want to make sure that they're actually doing something. And when they're done doing it, you want to prompt them to share your content. And you want to make it easy to use. They shouldn't have to go copying something or finding something. Make it easy for them to share it on social media. Sometimes, though, it just comes down to luck. My one buddy, you know, he ended up having a business that's three years strong over a product he made for his daughter for Halloween. He just made a homemade costume, um, and it started, um, it was like a completely black outfit, and he used like these glow stick lights, or LED lights, to create a stick figure, so that she was this little two-year-old running around. Well, he had already come up with this costume for snowboarders, and it didn't take effect, but with her, he did it at the right time, and it was, you know, the right costume, and the right people saw it, and it went viral. It went from a 1,000 to, you know, 10,000 to 100,000 to a million to 20 million viewers in one week. And it was pure luck. He ended up on talk shows and talking about it. And, you know, he created an entire business out of it. So you, you can even check it out. It's called Glowy Zoe. Um, but, you know, his story was pure luck. And luckily, he did something with it. All right, so the next thing we're going to look at is some different campaigns that had wins and fails. So the first one I want you guys to check out is the Dollar Shave Club. The Dollar Shave Club launched their brand on social media alone. They used YouTube, had creative videos, and, you know, wrote on the curtails of the Old Spice commercials. And it was brilliant. They got people's attention. It was so random that people laughed. It was creative. And now the business is thriving. They have other products. And they actually have sister companies that they created as well for people with beards. So not necessarily on shaving. Um, and they act like their competition. So they are extremely creative. If you have not checked out their videos, you should definitely check out the Dollar Shave Club. Um, in, in this case study, it says, you know, the new company with an official approach to the pedestrian business of selling razor blades, Dollar Shave Club received a huge bounce from its viral YouTube video. The ad included a bear costume and the phrase, our blades are effing great. And Smackdown of tennis great Roger Federer. They ended up with 7.7 .7 million views. It's pretty awesome. Alright, there's our fail McDonald's. Um, here is another couple fails that I want to look at. You know, this one was KitchenAid. And the reason I bring this up is you want the right people monitoring your brand. You do not want to turn all your content over to an intern or somebody who's not invested in the company. Um, so this one says, during the second presidential debate, in response to comment President Barack Obama made about his grandmother in health care reform, the official... Um, company Twitter account dispatched the following. Obama's GMA even knew it was going to be bad. She died three days before he became president. Hashtag NBC politics. The company deleted the offending tweet the, um, and immediately apologized. Individual responsible is never allowed to tweet for the company again. So they took action, but the damage was already done. And so you want to make sure that you let the right people handle your account and that you're observing, you know, what account you're actually using. The second one I want to bring up um, is by from Celebrity Boutique. It says, Celebrity Boutique's official Twitter account dispatched, hashtag Aurora is trending, clearly about our Kim K-inspired hashtag Aurora dress, smiley face. In reality, the trend was in reference to the mass shooting the same day as Aurora, Colorado. They deleted the offending a tweet and apologized, but again... It was still, you know, the damage was done. So they really need, you need to pay attention to even the hashtags that you're using. Check them out before you're posting content. Make sure they're relevant and that it's not something that's going negative and you should be monitoring your campaign the whole time 
because sometimes some things happen and you don't mean for them to be negative, but in the process of your campaign, they can go negative. Just like Nike had happened when they had these shirts out that said Boston Massacre and the Boston bombing happened just right after that and they had to pull everything from the shelves. So stay on top of your brand, stay on top of your campaigns and make sure you're monitoring the content. This is another one that I want you guys to check out. You should, you know, check out all these different campaigns, specifically the Lay's campaign, Lay's Potato Chips. They use all of the aims of social media marketing in this campaign because they decided to come up with a creative idea, which was when they, you know, did their different chips and they let people um, submit ideas um, for different chips and different brands. And um, they had huge participation. Let me see if I can pull this up really quick. Okay, so the internet is really slow. There it goes. Alright, so the one I'm talking about is this one. Lay's do us a flavor. So they got brand awareness. Um, you know, they put the message out there and they had 3.8 million submissions. So by the time they really start, um, you know, going forth with their campaign, they already had an audience and they had a well laid out campaign. Um, from the 3.8 million submissions, they chose the top 25 flavors and manufactured and tested them and then landed on the top three flavors. And so they let people know they're finalists, get more people talking, and they put the three flavors online. And they manufactured them and put them in the stores and people could buy them and taste them and give you their opinion. Um, so they now are driving people to buy and generate revenue. And they're changing the brand image by coming up with these unique flavors, right? Get changing the way that people think about just the plain old Lay's potato chips. The next thing they did is have people vote on the chips and interact and start talking about the ones that they liked. And people were taking pictures of them and they're posting about them on all different social platforms, which is also having brand awareness. So you have in participation and brand awareness. And then <clears throat> they got to choose the final chip, which was then manufactured and put into the stores. And the winner, you know, won a different prize. So you want to make sure that you're coming up with creative ideas that are solving your problems and that you have a clear plan to get people there. Okay. These are two more campaigns that worked. You have these two different Super Bowl campaigns from a couple years ago. The one was Quest for Six, and the other one is the Final Stop New Orleans. And they're both from 2013. The first one is vibrant and bold, and they have imagery that supports this idea. Even the profile image is updated to support this idea. But they're going for six, and they're energetic about it, and they want their audience to feel energetic about it. So they have, again, all their imagery, and all of their articles, and everything they're writing matches that tone of that campaign. On the other hand, the tone of the campaign for the Baltimore Ravens was more somber. And it was Ray Lewis's final stop, you know, in New Orleans. And he's walking backwards and it's black and white. And they want you to draw on that emotion. Do it for Ray is really what they're trying to say. And their articles again, and what they're posting, focus on that. All right, so I want you guys to go ahead and check out the old case, or the old case, the Old Spice case study. This case, um, this brand used to be an old brand, and you know, something more for what your grandfather or father would wear. Uh, so they wanted to reinvent themselves, and they chose to do it when their competition, so they stayed one step ahead of the game, was going to be launching a product of men's body wash, trying to reach the male demographic the younger male demographic. Well, Old Spice said, hmm, you know, females also buy this product 
um, for their spouses or for their significant other. So we want to make sure that we are reaching men and women. And so they came up with an ad campaign that launched at the same time as the Super Bowl, but it launched online, so they were saving a lot of money. And it was so successful that they continued the campaign, and they um, used an approach where they were engaging the fans, and they had their spokesperson, who was now being talked about all over the media, and all over social media as well, um, you know, interacting and engaging with the fans directly, um, creating videos that were for them. So go ahead and pause this video and download the Old Spice video, um, campaign and watch it. I really, guys, I want you to pay attention because it's such an important video in social media history. Okay, guys, we are back. And right now, I want you guys to go ahead and we're going to read the beginning part of the case study. And you guys are going to go then to your discussion board and you are going to submit ideas. You're going to present ideas as if you were hired as an agency or marketing firm to um, come up with creative ideas to help the New York Giants meet their objective. And so we're going to go ahead and read the background information, and then we are going to um, look at their objective as well. So the objective is to grow engagement with the Giants fans on and off the football field through social media innovation. And you guys have a copy of this as well for you to download. The background information is the New York Giants have been at playing football for 87 years and have quickly become a model for how one traditional organization can embrace change and win big with social media. For Big Blue, tradition worked for a while. However, as social media became a force in how people connect with each other and their favorite brands, the Giants began to leverage this new channel to drive engagement with their fans. They understood that social media would allow them to intimately connect their fans with the teams, players, and their brands in a way that traditional media outlets would not be able to do so on their own. The Giants subscribed to this mass relevance platform in order to innovate and build social media programs throughout the year using social curation and redisplay of Twitter content. The subscription model gave flexibility they needed to drive innovation and quickly implement social integrations into their marketing and media platforms. So what I want you guys to do right now is you're going to go onto the platform and you're going to pitch three creative ideas each. The first idea is going to be um, something that will help them engage with their fans during the games. The second idea is going to be an idea that will help them engage with their fans um, outside of the event attendance during the season or during the games. And the third idea that I want you guys to fully develop and come up with and pitch is something that you can pitch with, that would happen during, um, you know, when they are not playing, so during the off season. So go ahead, and I want you to pause this video, go to the discussion board, and pitch your ideas. All right. So... Once you're done, you can go through and read the rest of the case study. I apologize, that was my dog and my son. Alright, so now that you guys are back, the strategy, um, I want you to go through and read it and see exactly what they did. Look at what the team used to reach their audience. Look at how they reached them on the field and off the field and how they were able to even generate revenue without pushing anything and using, you know, with a qualified audience. And they did not have to spend much money at all. They used their regular resources to do so. Look at and see, you know, did your ideas compare with them? And what other ideas that you could think of? I then want you guys to go ahead and look at the results. 
You can see here that, you know, the Giants Twitter followers grew by 122.87%. Uh, 87% in the um, preseason alone, and that, you know, their Twitter ranking increased, and they increased their sales as well. All right. The last thing I want you guys to do is look at the messaging mistakes. Um, I'm going to quickly review these, but my voice is quickly fading, so I want you to also make sure you read these in your reading um, and go over them. They are in your ebook that you guys have downloaded in your course library, um, so you can reference them. You're going to look through three different types of mistakes. You're going to look through strategy mistakes, uh, using the wrong tools, and messaging mistakes. The strategy mistakes you're going to look at are, you know, not developing a strategy at all. So you need to have a plan. Uh, going in for a big campaign and say you're going to wing it is not the best plan because you're going to miss a step or something is not going to be connected. So make sure that you're doing that. And while you have your strategy and you're running your campaign, you want to perfect your strategy. So you want to make sure that you're monitoring your campaign and that you're going in and you're looking at, you know, as you're running your campaign that you're doing that. Um, and that you're looking at your results after the campaign seeing what could you do better. And we do this in week four, you know, you guys are going to look at your campaigns and do the same type of thing. And you're going to improve it. And if there is something you can improve on the fly, make sure that you are improving it instead of waiting till later. You also want to make sure that you're gathering followers and you continue to gather followers. If you're not, it's a huge mistake because you're going to have no one to look at your content and to interact with it. Additionally, you want to make sure that you're not being closed-minded. That you're using multiple platforms and you're not closing off to a platform just because you don't personally like it. If that was the case, I would never use Snapchat or I would not consider using Snapchat because it's going to reach a different demographic. So maybe it's not for you, but if your audience is going there, you need to be there because that's where they're engaging and that's where they're interacting and find a way to connect with them. Be a thought leader and step, you know, get ahead of the game. Also, getting too far ahead. If your brand isn't ready for, you know, a contest, and you don't have enough people interacting with your contest or on a certain platform, don't do that. If they're not ready for, you know, to buy a product, don't push that idea. Start with where your brand is. Go back to the smart girls when we talked about being realistic. And be realistic about where your brand is and if you can actually reach that goal. So think about it. The next thing is using the wrong tools. Um, a lot of people, you know, have that build it and it will come mentality. You guys set your tools up um, last week when you set the foundation for your brand. But if you're not creating content and you're not trying to reach people and you don't put it out at the right times and you're not constantly putting out content, you're not going to have an audience and you're not going to get far. You get, you're just going to have this pretty site that's not doing anything and has no traffic. You also want to make sure that you're using them correctly. Sit back and see how are other people creating content on these platforms? What are they doing? How are they, you know, reaching a larger audience? Are they using certain hashtags? Are they using trending? What are they doing? Not using tools at all is also an issue. Thinking that you don't need them um, and that you're just going to stick to different methods. You want to make sure that you're staying on the latest trends and again, that you are reaching your audience where they are. So make sure that you're active and you set a content calendar, um, you know, so that you constantly have things coming out on a regular basis and a schedule that people understand. The last thing we're going to review is messaging mistakes. I use this example because it's awful. And my brother was on this race team and I was embarrassed for it. It says the 99 account manager. This is not a person. You know, Carl Edwards was, there's, an all-star or still his, you know, NASCAR driver. He was very personable. So they should be showing his image. They should be, you know, having it there for people to look at. It's not even, was not even the car colors. Um, and they should have, you know, a person for them to be interacting with um, and having a name so it doesn't feel like it's just a regular news feed. People want that two-way communication and they want to connect with that insider fan who's part of the team. That's the role of the super, or the super, the social media manager. So make sure that you're creating personal accounts and that you're adding the imagery and that you're adding the information.
Otherwise, you're just a talking head. Also, you want to make sure that these are contradictory, but that you're controlling the message because, or, I mean, that sorry, that you're not controlling the message. Um, or you don't want to control the message, that's what I want to say. Because you can't control what other people are saying about your brand. You can control the campaign content, what you're putting out there, but you shouldn't be removing their content, right? You should have this level of transparency. Um, and you can't go around telling them, don't say that, because it's just going to egg them on more. Once you put it out there, it's out there. So you have to let it go, and it will fizzle out, hopefully, if something goes wrong, or you can encourage it if it's going better. But don't sit there trying to control what other people are saying because it's going to drive you nuts or arguing with them. Um, but again, if a campaign starts going awry, it is okay to bring it down, which is why I have the next one is not controlling the message. If you see a negative um, and you don't want to just leave out a bad campaign so like McD stories could have, they were able to take their campaign down and they had, were successful with it. Also, you don't want to abuse the permissions of your followers. You want to make sure that if they give you their contact information, um, that you're using it appropriately for the reason that they signed up um, and you're asking permission from them. So make sure that, you know, again, that you're not abusing their permissions and that you're gauging how your audience will handle things um, or how, you know, when you're, you're contacting communication with them. Okay. Um, make sure you guys um, finish your homework. Um, do all your blended learning that's listed on the platform, that you attend your volunteer opportunity, and I will have the reflection information up there for you, that you take your midterm, uh, you do your reading, and that you guys did your discussion board, and you actually watch this entire video in the end. Um, because if you didn't, you will not get full credit. Contact me if you have any questions at all regarding the material, and um, I will... Hopefully hear from you guys soon, and if not, I will talk to you on um, Monday in class. I will see you then. Thanks.